I say to my crew all the time, if we haven't made enough mistakes or enough failures, we're not trying hard enough. Go for something that's scary. Be uncomfortable. Push it. That gives people the freedom that it's okay to fail. We walked in the first day, day one, and I said, look, before we start, I just want to say something. It's okay to make mistakes. In fact, I want everyone to go and make a lot of mistakes right now because we want to go and learn and we want to know and understand what it is we're doing will help. And that's the premise which we started and it just liberated everyone to go and try things and innovate and move forward. I tell them I believe in them. I instill my absolute belief and faith in their success because they've been chosen. They are committed to success. People want to succeed and I believe in them. I believe in my crew. That's the reason why they're here. And I reassure them of that. Like win or lose, I prefer to win, but I'm committed to your success and I believe in you and you'll figure out a way to go and to achieve this. I've tried so many things and failed so many times. I think I'm the guy that sort of turns over the rocks and tries lots of things. I sort of take failure as, well, that was awesome. Okay, well, now we know that thing. And then let's pivot and change and and adapt. And then we tend to win. The way in which I try and keep that and manage that and deal with that is to keep the experiment small. Every idea, no matter what, you can always boil it down to a very small and simple iteration. And I think if you just go and execute that, you will learn. You'll probably fail or not, but you will learn what's a small scale version of it. And then you can go and scale it. Now, scaling things doesn't necessarily always happen in a linear fashion. So there's other challenges with that. But at least this way, you're protecting your downside risk. Fail fast, but in a small way. I think the economy of attention is getting ruthlessly competitive. It's so hard to build a brand these days. In the past, you could just run a whole, buy a whole lot of TV ads and then you've got a brand. Whereas now, I think you're looking at a market where you need to figure out not only what your message is and your product and the customer you're serving, but then why are you relevant? Your job is to figure out as a marketer how to become relevant, how to communicate to either someone in the right framing or establish the path so that you are the person that they want to speak to in that moment. Marketers today need to understand that, know their place, and then really focus, focus on that channel, focus on that place, and then start to adapt and improve other areas. Just choose one to begin with and become great at it. A lot of marketers just take on so many different things and they spray their bullets in so many different places. It makes it very challenging in this market to compete. All the tacticians and the operators and the people on the keys these days, they're really good. I used to get away with writing really nasty designed ad and that would work. But now on the internet, the bar is so much higher. I love it. But at the same time, wow, what a game you got to play. As a marketer, I think the minimum these days is you need to know in some way, shape or form how to code something about design, something about copywriting, headlines, and those kind of things. You can write it or you can't, but at least you know our principles. Those three things now are the minimum to play the game in my books. I think that a vision is the job of a CEO. It's creating and manifesting a picture and words that represent the future of where we're all going. As humans at its core want to know that. They want to know we're building up to something, we're going somewhere. That job of creating that vision and establishing that and describing that, that's the job of the leader. That is what makes a great leader. And if you haven't got a vision, that's okay. But I suggest you get one. It's going to define where you go, not today, not tomorrow, not in a year's time, but in three years' time, that's where you will be. Great leaders have always done this. They manifest a vision. They think about the future. They plan out. It's very much the strategy. Strategy and vision are very connected to me. I think vision comes first, and then you figure out a strategy of how to get there. You know, and that's kind of the next step to some extent. Well, I think it's more like vision than a mission than a strategy. Then you have a brand and positioning. Those are the four tenants that must be solved in any company, not negotiable. I can consider myself a bit of a time traveler because I travel forward in time and understand and experience what the world will be like. And then I translate that back to today and communicate where we need to go in order to be the best at that future world. And I don't necessarily think I'm the best at coming up with that idea. I'm better actually just describing that world. And then there are other crew here that are much smarter than me that know how to formulate that. It's not so much you need to know how to solve that. It's just that you need to be able to describe very carefully and detailed what is the future going to look like.
So in Finder, our vision is to better all the world's decisions. And so there are three key parts to that, right? Better. So the person is in a better situation than they were before. The world's in a better situation. Our partners are in a better situation. And then it's all the world's decisions. So it's not just Australia. We decided we're not just an Australian company. We're going to go and actually help everyone around the world do this. And then decisions is really the key focus. We're obsessed about decisions at Finder. And that obsession is what really creates that urgency and that meaning of why. Why are we doing this? People's decisions in their life fundamentally affect who they are. That's all you have. You have choices every day to make. And those decisions that you make essentially determine the rest of your life. Everything is a choice as well. No matter what, you've chosen to do something regardless of anything you believe. You always have the choice. And that choice, we want to help people make better choices so that they, in some small way, they can save themselves an extra $10 a month and they avoided some fee. They got themselves a loan to go and make that wedding dress. This single mom gets to build her business, grow it and get that sewing machine that she needed so that eventually at the end of the year when it comes to Christmas, she gets to buy her six-year-old son that bike that he always wanted. And that just brings him so much joy and he goes on to be an explorer. And that's what we do day in, day out. And I hope the world in some small way becomes a better better place because of that. in some small way, I hope every effort that we've done here when we look back will we'll make the world a little bit better.